ladies and gentlemen, we have some huge news. And honestly, that's that's an understatement. We have some monumental, gargantuan news. Gargantuan is a word, right? I believe it is. So if you haven't been on Twitter or the internet for the last 15 to 20 minutes, you might have missed out on the news that Microsoft has purchased Activision Blizzard for $70 billion. That literally sounds like a Dr. Evil quote. That, that's what it sounds like to say it out loud. First of all, let me read the article. And there's a lot to dissect here. There's a lot to extrapolate. And I don't think it's even possible for me to fully do it in this video. But of course, Weapon Wheel is returning this Sunday. And what a great time we chose to return because gaming news has just been going crazy lately. So you're going to want to watch Weapon Wheel podcast this Sunday at 545 EST. Okay. Um, so let me read this article. As I said, there's a lot to break down here. Um, uh, in this article, this is I'm reading from Bloomberg, and I'm going to try to just run through you know the major things about four paragraphs real quick. So Microsoft is buying Activision Blizzard for seventy uh, billion dollars, more accurately sixty eight point seven uh, billion, uniting two of the biggest forces in video games. Uh, in its largest purchase ever, Microsoft will pay ninety five dollars a share in cash for one of the U.S. biggest game publishers known for the likes of Call of Duty and World of Warcraft, but which is also grappling with a cultural upheaval over its treatment of women. Uh, Y'all know the situation with Activision um, Executive Officer Bobby Kotick, uh, and he will continue to serve in that role, which I'm going to touch on later. Uh, once the deal closes, um, the, everybody will be reporting to Phil Spencer, including uh, Bobby Kotick, right? Because he's the head of Microsoft. Microsoft is obviously buying Activision Blizzard. So he's going to report up to Phil Spencer. This, this is a quote from uh, Microsoft. This acquisition will accelerate the growth in Microsoft's gaming business uh, across mobile, PC, console, and cloud, and will provide building blocks uh, for the metaverse. One of the industry's most leading publishers, Activision, has been mired in controversy for months amid several lawsuits across uh, over allegations of gender discrimination and harassment. Kodak, who, who's been the lead uh, in the company for three decades, has been under pressure from employees to resign. You know, the scandal's gotten out of control. That's the gist of, of the article, right? So, first of all, let me say shout out to the leakers who didn't get any of this right. I usually give Microsoft uh, leakers a lot of credit because they get a lot of stuff right. You know, they leak stuff well before it actually happens. But they they surprisingly got this wrong. Nobody pre predicted this one, this Activision Blizzard one, um, because they were all saying everything else. You know, it was it was it was Capcom, it was Take Two, it was every every other publisher or or developer. Uh, but for but funny enough. Nobody, even like random um, weirdo fans who wanted Microsoft to buy everybody, I, even them, I didn't see any of them actually say Activision Blizzard. So even going back to the Bethesda deal, right, which in comparison to this, this is that's nothing. This that that is nothing. OK, that that is small peanuts. That Bethesda deal is honestly irrelevant um, compared to this, even though. I care about a lot more of those uh, Bethesda IPs um, than any than any of these Activision games. Literally, out of all Activision's IPs, Activision Blizzard IPs, the only one I play or even care about even minutely is COD, and I only play COD for the for the campaign. I don't care about COD's multiplayer or anything. It's literally the only uh, uh, IP that they own that I that I care about. But still, this is a way bigger deal, right? And when when that deal was announced, what what did I say in that video, and what have I said that said that since then? Microsoft's greatest greatest strength. Do you know what it is? It, it it's not creativity, it's not cultivating talent, it's not building a studio for, for from the ground up. It's it's none of those things. And this is not me trying to shade them or shit on them, because this is a great this is 
monumental what they're doing, like I said. But that's, that's not their strength. None of those things. Their single greatest strength is money. Money. You remember, you remember, have any of you ever seen that, uh, that episode of South Park where pretty much they were trying to figure out how Magic Johnson pretty much survived having um, HIV AIDS, right? They, they couldn't figure it out, especially during the time when he, uh, when he caught a HIV, right? I don't, I don't know if it ever actually progressed to AIDS, but we know he has HIV and he's been living with it for a long time since a time when uh, people, when, when it was considered a death sentence to have. In South Park, you know South Park is a parody. It makes fun of everything. It doesn't pull any punches. You know what they figured out? What the cure to HIV was and how Magic Johnson was able to like avoid this, this death sentence. You know what it was? Money. That's what differentiated Magic Johnson's situation from everybody else who had it back in who caught it back in the day and unfortunately a lot of people died from it money was the difference maker and that's what the difference maker for microsoft is in the gaming industry and that's why it's able to compete money money and they've capitalized on acquiring publishers that were in some type of crisis Bethesda, they were in, honestly, a monetary, financial, revenue, profit crisis because their games weren't selling. Their games were definitely in a crisis. You look at all the sequels that uh, Bethesda had released prior to that deal, all like a bunch of them flopped. Flopped. And, and, I, and these are games I love. Dishonored 2, flopped. Wolfenstein 2, flopped. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood flopped. Fallout, whatever the hell it was called, forty-seven. I don't, I don't remember. Well, it didn't necessarily financially flop, but but the, it was a critical flop and, and hated across, you know, the, the the industry. It was maligned, right? A, a bunch of these IPs, Prey flopped. A bunch of these IPs just, they were not gonna get sequels whatsoever if they weren't by, bought by Microsoft, which was why, you know, I was okay with Microsoft buying them because I care about a lot of these. Well, not a lot. I'm, I care about, oh, I forgot to, um, what's that other horror game that I, that I love? It, it got a, it got a sequel, but the third one probably wasn't going to come out. Um, the horror game, y'all know what I'm talking about. It, it, it's Evil Within. Evil Within 2 flopped. All of these games just flopped. So I was okay because Microsoft came in and saved them. We're probably going to get sequels to those. So y'all see how they capitalize off, a, a, you know, a publisher that's going through a crisis. Activision obviously wasn't going through any type of financial cr crisis. It was going through a PR, you know, and optics crisis with these scandals and these lawsuits, you know, everything happening within, you know, the, uh, the company, you know, every, the situation with Bobby Kotick, they were able to capitalize off that. It was, it was a very expensive you know, capitalization, but they capitalize none, nonetheless, right? And not to say that they wouldn't, that they this wouldn't have happened if those things didn't happen. It, it's it's very possible because th this th these deals don't take like a few months or a few days to happen. So it's probably that this was set in motion uh, at least a while ago, and it's just happening now. But that situation obviously helped them because a, a company has to want to sell. They, they have to, you can't just buy anything. They got to want to sell. Um, so why is this happening? Why did Microsoft buy Activision Blizzard? It's, it's, it's so simple. We all know the answer. Game Pass. That's all it is. That's the single reason, the single most reason they made this move for $70 billion. Game Pass. They have to support Game Pass. You you got I, I'm not a poker player. I don't know much about poker. But Microsoft has went all in on Game Pass. If Game Pass doesn't work, Microsoft has nothing else. I mean, yes, they have these IPs that they own, but they've put all their chips in on Game Pass. They have to we we generally know how subscription services work. 
even though like Netflix, Hulu, or Disney Plus, even though those work a little bit differently than how it does for a gaming subscription services, we know from those things that to reach profitability, you have to have a lot of content, a lot of content to get a lot of subscribers to finally reach some type of profitability. Because as far as we know, most of these subscri uh, subscription services haven't been profitable. I don't know which ones have been. Maybe maybe y'all know, but every time I, I, I see any news about it, Netflix, Hulu, none of them are profitable. Maybe one of them are, I don't know. But every time I see it, nothing is profitable. So you need a lot of content because you need a shit ton of subscribers. A lot, a, a ridiculous amount. So Microsoft is going all in. And by the way, you got to know uh, a, 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 an increase to um, Game Pass is coming. Like a, the, the fee, the monthly fee or yearly fee. Oh, you know that's coming now. It was going to come before. People were talking about it, it happening before. Oh, it's absolutely happening now. It's it's and and that's fine. People people are gonna you know people think it's a great deal already. If they have to pay ten more dollars, you know that's that's fine for for a lot of people. But yeah, if Game Pass fails, if they don't reach a subscriber amount where they feel it's sustainable, then all this was for nothing. So they're putting all their chips and they're going they're going all out. That's what that's what this deal is about. This is about Game Pass and nothing else. I'm telling you, it's about it's about Game Pass and nothing else because. Over the past few years, this is what I give credit for Microsoft for. They are so smart with changing the rules, right? Microsoft realized they could not compete with the metrics that were used to measure success. When they realized, they, they, they changed the rules and because they realized they couldn't compete when it came to game sales. They couldn't compete when it came to console sales. They... they couldn't compete when it came to necessarily exclusives, completion rates, and like fan and and, and like fan favor, and um, just reaching uh, the globe, you know, all across the globe, gamers all across the globe, um, you know, that global reach like Nintendo and PlayStation has. They realized that they couldn't really do that, right? So they changed the rules. They made it so it's no longer about those metrics. You can't measure Microsoft's success necessarily by those metrics anymore for, for one reason, because you don't know them. Because remember, that was the first thing they did. They were like, okay, we're not going to talk about game sales. We're not going to talk about console sales. We're not going to let nobody knows what any of those things are because we can't compete in that area. We, we're, it, it's going to look bad on us and it's going to look like we're failing and we're always going to be in third place if we continue to measure success by those metrics. So slowly but surely, they started to just change all the, all the narratives and make it, oh, it's about subscribers now. It's about user, uh, what do they call it? Um, user engagement now. Who cares? Who cares about console sales? Who cares about game sales? Let's make it about user engagement and subscribers. And people started to fall for it. That's what, that's what people, even though I don't, I don't think that's a necessarily proper measure for success, in, in my opinion. Because, listen, anybody, you could get a million people to sample a, a game because they, they paid $1 for it. But I think if you actually paid a decent amount of, of, of money for it because you felt it was worth it, I think that's a better uh, you know, litmus test for how convincing and how good your product is if people are willing to pay for that individual product and how many people actually beat that game I think is more of an indicator of how that game how good that game is I think that just logically makes sense but Microsoft like I said has changed that and you got to give them credit for it. they've they've brainwashed a lot of people to think that user engagement and People, uh, and you know, just how, how many subscribers you have is the metric for success. They did that. It is what it is. So they've rendered all those metrics we use for success uh, irrelevant and somewhat inconsequential. Now, Bobby Kodak remains the CEO, but as I said, he will report up to Phil Spencer. I don't imagine that he'll stay there very long. Phil Spencer is a nice guy. I'm not, I don't think Phil Spencer will like when when the ink dries. Phil Spencer is gonna like fire him the next day. 
but I can't imagine um, him staying there for for too long. Um, you know, you just got to indicate that there's some type of change coming and you got to remove him uh, from his uh, from his place. You know, it, it's a new guard. So you got to remove him. Uh, so now what does this mean for Activision Blizzard owned IPs? More so than what I said about Game Pass, like how this is all for Game Pass. This is more about this is even more so, in my opinion, about Xbox Game Pass on PC, because Xbox Game Pass on PC is garbage. It is trash. OK, when you look at the the library of of games and Xbox Game Pass, it's, it's garbage for PC. Now, when you look at a lot of the game, the, the IPs they now own and I don't keep up with Game Pass. I don't know what games are in Game Pass. I don't know what games are not, right? But when you look at some of these Blizzard-owned IPs, these are these are PC games. These are PC. Of course, some people play some of them on console, but these are widely considered PC games. That's where most of the, the user base is at. StarCraft, World of Warcraft, o Overwatch, Diablo. Those are PC games. Now, those aren't necessarily, I mean, I don't know the player count, right? Those aren't like new games or anything like that. Um, but they're widely popular. We we know that. They there's I'm sure there's still millions of people who still play it. I assume I don't know the actual player count, but you know, these these are big names. World of Warcraft is how, how long have people played that game? Like I haven't heard anything about it like in 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 recent news like it's not necessarily at the forefront of gaming. It's may may not be the biggest game people are playing anymore. But it's it's still a big deal to have to own World of Warcraft. You know what I'm saying? Like, and some other Activision IPs. COD is is obviously the biggest one. Crash Bandicoot, uh, Tony Hawk, Skylanders. But of course, the biggest deal is COD, right? Now, the question obviously people are gonna ask: Okay, what well, are these games gonna be exclusive? If I'm Phil Spencer, they are. I'll tell you that if I'm Phil Spencer, these games are absolutely going to be exclusive. Now, I know some people can't envision a world where a Call of Duty game is exclusive. Listen, Phil Spencer, if you want to be cutthroat, if you want to be that guy, you make these games exclusive. I, I said the same thing about the Bethesda deal. You want to be that guy. And, and from 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 everything we know, everything, you know, Bethesda makes will be exclusive. But if you want to be that guy, because listen, if if Sony did this, if PlayStation did this, you you know you wouldn't even have to question. You would not even have to question if these games were going to be exclusive. You know, there's no question. Uh, is it going to be? Come on, come on, bro, come on, dog. Why, why are you even asking that question? Because you know how Sony roll. You know how Sony move, and that's one of the reasons they've, you know, they've been dominant. So if I'm Phil Spencer, I would make it that way. And to me, it's once it's inconsequential to me because, you know, I play whatever games that are not on PlayStation on PC anyway. So it doesn't it wouldn't matter to me necessarily if these games are on uh, PlayStation or not. But I'm just saying if I'm Phil Spencer, they're definitely not going to be. But I don't I, I don't know how Phil Spencer is, is like I don't know how he's fully going to move, you know, because, you know, it, it's because Phil Spencer has said that he's against exclusives. Let's not forget that he's a it's it's so funny because I think people look at Phil Spencer and they're and they get confused a lot because he says one thing, but does the other thing like the polar opposite of what he says. But I think that's the man and that's the business. Right. As a as the head of Microsoft. Phil Spencer knows that he needs like exclusives and. Uh, you know, to own these IPs and to take away um, games from other platforms. But the person, Phil Spencer, the, the gamer or the man, Phil Spencer, may be completely against exclusivity and, and those type of things. So I can I can understand that perspective. Some people are like, oh, he's a hypocrite. Eh, not really. I mean, th th there's there's certain things that you may do on your job. And, and a lot of people face this dilemma that you don't necessarily condone but it's your job so you got to do it so i understand that perspective but so i i don't but so the point is i don't know but i would lean towards 
I would lean towards um, exclusivity. Um, and they're definitely going to Game Pass day one. That that's an that's an obvious thing. Game Pass day, even if you don't make it exclusive, it's going to be day one Game Pass, which uh, is a, is a is is a big thing. Um, so now um, Microsoft owns these publishers or former independent publishers. Um, they own all these IPs now. Let let me just say that now that they own all of this. So many uh, publishers, games, they have so much under their umbrella. They're, if they don't dominate, it's going to be very weird if they somehow don't dominate with all of this. And I'm talking about in every way, even in, even in, even in the metrics that they don't that they try to like, you know, kind of like whitewash and, you know, just remove from, you know, history as, as in the way that we measure success. I feel like even in those ways, if you don't dominate, it's going to be weird. It's going to be like, okay, well, what was all of this for? You know, like if, if you don't reach this, because you got to know they have a subscriber, a, an ideal subscriber amount in their head that they want to reach and that's why they're doing this deal if they don't reach that like what was all what was all this for they they got to be thinking that if they don't reach all their other goals and objectives this is going to be like even with all of this even with all these crazy big ballsy moves you still couldn't couldn't reach your milestone these milestones of all these successes whether whether it be theirs or ours all I'm saying is they they got to now. They they got to. And as far as uh what this means for PlayStation, which is the last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on, is you know, and I'm not what really one of those people who when I get these type of acquisition type news, I don't really think about what PlayStation needs to do or if PlayStation needs to make a move. I don't really think about it in that way. I I didn't think about it. When we when we talk about the Bethesda deal, and I don't really think about it now in re- in regards to this. Like even when people were like, "Oh, uh, Sony uh, PlayStation has you know these uh, superhero IPs, uh, Wolf, Wolf, uh, Wolverine and Spider Man." Does Microsoft need a which? And this is very small in comparison to you know this acquisition. Does Microsoft need a superhero? I'm like, no. Why? Like I don't I don't believe that because one does something that the other needs a direct answer and a direct counter. I don't necessarily believe that. I do I do believe that PlayStation will continue to acquire of course nothing on this level, nothing to this severity, right? Um nothing on this scale. We we know that. It may be I wouldn't put it past them that they buy a publisher. I I don't think that's impossible. We know they don't got the the money uh, that Microsoft has. That's been overstated. But can they buy a publisher? They they can. Can they buy it for seventy billion? Probably not. Definitely not. Um, but I think they will continue to evaluate. You know, buy. Uh, you know, smaller developers. You know, developers that they that they feel uh, fits naturally and organically under the PlayStation umbrella. So, and I think that's really, you know, all there is to it. Um, they're definitely the execs at PlayStation are definitely like, okay, yeah, they're, 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 they're not just like, eh, shrugging their shoulders. No, <laughs> let's not, let's, let's be real. They're not shrugging their shoulders. Like, eh, they bought Activision Blizzard. No big deal. Of course, the execs have to, you know, evaluate this and figure out their next move. I'm just saying, I don't think their moves ever have to match, uh, the grandiose nature of what Microsoft does. So this is, uh, this is, this is. Huge, nonetheless, as I've stated. This is not to be undermined or, you know, downplayed at all. So uh, Microsoft's making moves, man. They, they're going to continue to use their, uh, their money, which is, like I said, their greatest strength. And really, the only thing that really stopped them from being like this earlier was 
pretty much Microsoft believing in them um, in the in the gaming division. Because as we know, the whole situation, what, what was it with Satya and Phil Spencer and you know, Microsoft at, 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 at one point wanted to sell off Xbox. They didn't believe in the gaming division as they did. Now they kind of like let loose the stables. They, they, they loosened the reins and they're letting like the, the actual gaming division of, uh, of, you know, Microsoft strive. That, that's really been the, big, the biggest difference. That's really been the, they're, they're spending money on the gaming division. They, they believe in it. They open the checkbook, man. It is what it is. So let me know what y'all think about this, man. Um, hit the like button. Uh, hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I, I go uh, up, up, upload a video or go live. Hit the join button. Um, Weapon Wheel podcast this Sunday is going to be lit. I got to plan some the proper guests for that. Um, and, and yeah, man, we, we back. I want you to hit the streets. Tell them Weapon Wheel is back. Let them know we back up. Follow me on Twitter if you're not. And I will catch y'all on the next video. Peace.